Hello, repair time again. This time I got this M Audio Axiom 49 MIDI controller and I picked it up for a small amount because it is dead. So, what are the symptoms? It powers on and nothing else happens. It seems like the a uh, computer inside this thing doesn't boot up. So I found a suitable power supply uh, for my Wi-Fi router, which I'm not using at the moment. Um, so it has the suitable connector, which fits, and the positive is in the center. 12 volts, 700 milliamps, should be enough. Let's try. Alright, I connected the power supply instead of USB. Let's try. And the same thing. I did a little research on the internet and I see that many people have complaints about Emodio keyboards. Uh, so this so-called blue screen of death is a quite popular uh, complaint on forums. Well, however, I don't think it's the same problem every time. Uh, I see it about small keyboards uh, with 25 keys and these uh, Axiom 49s and about 61 key keyboards and big ones with 80 keys. Uh, I think this can be a manifestation of many other problems. So what we really see is that backlight on the LCD display is on and computer doesn't work. It could be because of million reasons. However, I've seen uh, a discussion on forums about a uh, reset chip uh, failing. So I've seen uh, several hints about this here and there. So this sounds like one promising thing to investigate. Uh, so let's uh, take this thing apart and see uh, if we have the same problem or something else. Let's go. I opened it up and I even unscrewed the main board and disconnected everything from it. Uh, all connectors are different, so there should be no problem to figure out. And I took a picture before. I took it apart. Uh, it is still attached with one ground wire, which is soldered on the board. Um, so let's have a look. On the other side is the main microcontroller. Let me zoom in. And here is this little reset chip people are talking about on forums. So I'm not sure it's a problem here, so um, I'll probably connect the power uh, to the board and measure. Before we measure anything, we need to get some idea what to expect. So I looked at this chip under a magnifying glass and it's marked CW801. I couldn't find data sheet for exactly this chip, but I found an equivalent from microchip, uh, which is uh, TCM 809 or 810. And these are two different flavors of the same thing. And difference is that one has reset line active low, another has reset line active high. So which one we need in this case? Uh, let's see, I found a data sheet for the microcontroller, which is ST92163, and it has reset active low. So that bar above the reset um, means it is active low. So uh, this chip uh, has three pins and uh, one is ground, one is power and third one is reset and we should expect that this thing holds uh, after powering up 
holds the reset line low for a while and then goes high and stays high during normal operation. And what is this a while thing? Uh, here in the specs they mention uh, 140 milliseconds minimum. So what can we check? We can quickly check if it stays high during normal operation. Let's do that. So let's connect negative to the piece of metal which is connected through this wire to the ground plane of the board and let's start measuring. I will turn this on and the power supply rail on this chip is here which is 4.2 volts. It's a little low. I would expect something closer to 5 uh, and the reset line is here and it's 3 volts so it does stay high um, however I'm not sure um, it does the proper reset how can we find out uh, we can use a oscilloscope for that so uh, here I connected channel 1 to a little sticking out pin uh, right next to the microcontroller, which is a power pin. Uh, and the channel 2, I will hold it by hand, but now it's pointing towards the uh, reset line. Uh, so one of the three pins on that little chip. And you hear the noise of my oscilloscope, uh, which has a noisy fan. So let's move to the scope. So, here I set up the scope. Let's have a look. I set 2 volts per division on both channels uh, vertically. 50 milliseconds per division uh, horizontally. And the trigger is on channel 1, uh, around 1 volt. So, uh, the channel 1 is power. When power goes high and crosses one volt it will trigger and record this thing and we will examine the result so let me power this thing on there we go now let's have a look what we've got so uh, remember this is 50 milliseconds per division, so each division is 50 milliseconds. And uh, remember that number 140 milliseconds minimum reset in the specs of the reset chip. So let's assume they are all very similar. So we should expect about three divisions or so after power goes high, the reset line should stay low for about three divisions and it doesn't. It goes high right at the moment of power going high. So there is no reset happening here at all. And I believe this reset chip is faulty. So how can we fix this? Uh, the best way would be to order such a chip uh, through a supplier like digikey.com or mouser.com or something like that. I found such a chip on DigiKey, it is 41 cents a piece, uh, well, plus shipping, of course, which can be a few dollars. And um, uh, another way would be traditional way of doing the reset using just a resistor and capacitor, like this. When we put resistor and capacitor in series and connect resistor to the positive of power supply, uh, capacitor to the ground, the voltage at this point uh, on power up will rise exponentially and then reach the power supply voltage at some point. And it is a well-known fact that it will reach about 62-63% in the time which is a product of resistance and capacitance. 
you can look it up uh, for example in Wikipedia uh, look for uh, RC time constant so let's figure out the values we want uh, let's start uh, with our 140 milliseconds which is 10 to the minus 3 so this is milliseconds uh, and that should be equal to our resistor times capacitor so let's start with the resistor what value we want approximately uh, well we don't want very low value because uh, then we will need very large capacitance and we also don't want very high value let's say in mega ohms why because the current will be tiny and uh, though input pins should really draw no current at all theoretically but in practice they do and uh, this tiny current can be upset but by that tiny current quite a bit and distort this whole uh, setup so let's stick with something in the middle of the range let's say 10 kilo ohms or something like that if so then we will write our 10 kilo ohms which is 10 to the fourth power uh, times what do we need uh, for capacitance to match that uh, thing on the left side well we obviously want 140 times to the uh, 10 to the some power uh, which will match this minus 3 so what do we need here to match minus 3 we have four zeros here so we need minus 7 here and that will uh, match this minus 3 so what kind of capacitance is this uh, it is uh, 14 microfarads so let's call it 10 microfarads uh, and we can take resistor for example 20 kilo ohms to uh, to have time constant slightly higher than necessary but that's okay uh, if you remember the specs for the chip they also say 140 minimum so if we are slightly higher we should be fine so let me see what we can do so uh, I went through my parts and found this small 10 microfarads capacitor and um, 20 kilo ohms, 22 kilo ohms resistor and they should be small enough to fit under the board uh, there is a small clearance uh, the board is sitting on the plastic standoffs so it should be enough room for these small parts to fit so let me arrange them on the board but how do we remove this chip there are many ways uh, some people i see proposed uh, cutting it with a knife or something like that some some other way of breaking this chip uh, that is probably the easiest for somebody with no equipment uh, but it's a little dangerous you can uh, damage the board uh, lift the pads from the board and create a mess uh, another way would be to let's say use a blob of solder on the soldering iron so that you cover the small chip the chip is really tiny so if you try to cover all three pins at once and heat up all three pins at once it should be uh, good enough to remove it well it's probably a little messy as well and uh, uh, there is a special solder for such cases I believe it's called quick chip or something uh, that's a special alloy which stays molten for quite a while so you can heat up uh, all three in this case pins and they stay molten you have time to remove the chip I don't have this handy and I don't need to because I have another tool so I have this desoldering station which is really a heat gun uh, where you can set the uh, temperature and uh, put a suitable nozzle there are different sizes 
now we have a medium one installed and it's good enough for this job probably a smaller one can do as well uh, but I'll try this one so I will set temperature to 300 degrees C and let's go so I will heat this thing up and then solder melts I will lift it with tweezers and lift the chip okay here it is all right with some careful soldering i installed resistor and capacitor instead of the chip and let's give it a try so here i connected the minimum just the power and the display now let's give it a try aha uh -huh. it works So I'd like to show you on the scope what's happening now. I will power this thing on. And let's have a look at the result. So when the power rises, uh, this charge on the capacitor, which is a reset of the microcontroller, it starts rising. And uh, let's say in about four divisions, it rises enough so that microcontroller starts treating this as logical high so effectively removing the reset at this point and remember for divisions 50 milliseconds per division that's about uh, 200 milliseconds and we installed 10 microfarads uh, times 22 kilo ohms which should be about 200 milliseconds so uh, proper reset chip uh, would be better so it would probably hold it logical zero all the time and then suddenly rise to logical one and there are some other minor advantages to proper reset chip but this is uh, how reset was traditionally done and this is good enough and by the way, the voltage on the microcontroller now is a little higher. It was 4.1 or 4.2, something like that. Um, so perhaps that dead chip was drawing uh, uh, excessive current and sagged the power rail a little bit. Uh, this is still a little lower than 5 volts, which I would expect. But that's probably okay. I looked how they uh, mix two power sources. We have USB and this power supply. We don't have to apply both but uh, the way they uh, uh, mix them is through two Schottky diodes. So there is a small drop on them but still uh, this drop can be easily uh, attributed to that. And uh, at least this microprocessor uh, has operating range from 4 volts to 5. I'm not sure about the rest of the circuitry. I would imagine that Amodio did the homework and they uh, determined that this is fine. All components uh, can work from 4.5 or something volts. Well, uh, let's put this thing back together. All right, it's back together and connected to USB this time and it works. When I move controls, push buttons, tap on the pads, move wheel, uh, and I push transpose buttons. Well, I see some action on the screen. So, should be back in business. Job done. Thanks for watching. Bye.